Stanford University. Hi, everyone. I'm Lauren Brichter. I wrote an app called Tweety, which is on the, the App Store right now, Twitter client. Um, just to give you a little bit of background about me, uh, a while ago I used to work for Apple. I worked on the original iPhone. I left two years ago, and I started a company called 8Bits. Um, I've been doing that for two years. Tweety is my first successful app. Um, it actually started as a two-week side project. Uh, I never thought it would go anywhere. Uh, I didn't like any of the existing Twitter, Twitter clients, so I just decided to write my own. Um, it re was released November 19th, and yeah, that's it. Uh, just to give you a little more background, even though I worked at Apple and I technically even worked on UIKit, I had no real app building experience. So I, I really started fresh with Tweety, which is kind of weird. Um, just to give you a bit of this. I haven't shown this to anyone yet. This is daily revenue from Tweety since it was released in the App Store. Um, as you can see, it seems to have been following Twitter's explosive growth. Uh, I'm not sharing specific numbers because I'm not comfortable with it. But uh, you can see starting at the beginning, like I had a nice little spike of my friends and my friends' friends who bought the app. And like that little spike way at the beginning made me happy. Like if no one else bought it after that, <laughs> Like, you know, it was worth the two weeks effort. Like, the amount of money I was making at the time, which is like practically zero, like, you know, that was good. Um, since then, based on publicly available stats, it's grown to be probably the most successful Twitter app ever by revenue and number of people, which is nuts. It's the most, uh, it's the most popular mobile Twitter client, and it's the second most popular Twitter client, like, that I know of. Um, yeah, there we are. As of today, number three after TweetDeck in the web. But everybody uses TweetDeck, so I don't think I'm ever going to be able to compete with that. Uh, let's see. It is today the most popular paid social networking app. And it was at its, at its like heyday, number six, the, the number six paid app in the App Store. Um, so first of all, like, thank you for having me, because this really made me uh, think about why the hell this happened. Because um, I really had no idea. I wrote the app in two weeks, put it in the App Store, and it really like, it went nowhere for a while. And then, bam, people started using it. So the, when I released it, there were a few apps in the App Store. The Twitterific, uh, Twitterlator, Twitterfon, and uh, I put Tweetsville down there at the bottom. <laughs> because it was, a, it, was a good, it was a really good app, but so, uh, since Tapulous bought it, they seem to be, I don't know, I don't know what the hell they're doing. But. Yeah, they're, they're, they're probably satisfied just making branded versions of Tap Tap Revenge. But it's a shame, because it was a great app. And I thought that was going to be like my main competitor. And it just went nowhere. Um, so wh why did Tweety become popular? Uh, you know, you have Twitterific, which was like super simple. The entire UI is one big list. But, and people love it. People love that on the desktop, so they, they love that on the iPhone. You have Twitter later, which is like the complete opposite extreme of uh, Twitterific, like it does. It, this app would do everything, like everything imaginable. This app would do, but how the hell do you do it? You have three tiny buttons with like no hit area. You have to like tap it four times to hit the buttons. Like if you tap here, it'll do something. If you tap here, it'll do something. If you tap here, it'll do something. If you tap and hold, it'll do something else. It's a really powerful app, but you couldn't figure out how to do half the stuff. Twitterfon, on the other hand, was like it's very Tweety-ish. It's free. It was open source at the time. I don't think it is anymore. Uh, it's simple. It's fast. I'm surprised this app didn't become more popular than it did. Um, the only reason, yeah, I don't know. I mean, Twitterfon was my, my, my client of choice until I wrote Tweety. And I, really, the only big differences between Twitterfon and Tweety is like slightly nicer UI, maybe slightly faster, maybe not. Um, multiple accounts, Instapaper, a few other random features. But yeah, I mean, it's a great app. I'm just, I don't know. I don't know why it didn't become insanely huge. The guy probably could have charged for it and made a ton of money. Um, so anyway, Tweety comes along, and like it's it blends the simplicity of Twitterific with the power of Twitterlator, like in a Twitterfon esque manner, it's super fast, and like people just loved it. And well, I mean they didn't love it at first; they didn't really know about it at first. But uh, I think it hit that like perfect combination of power and simplicity. It's very very Apple esque. Um, yeah, that's yeah. I got lucky, I guess. How much are you charging? Two ninety nine. And I, 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 like, I, I charge $2.99 since the beginning. I haven't done any like, price shenanigans or anything. Like, a lot of people like, introduce for free, and then they change the price. Yeah, I mean, you could do that. I, I guess it works for some quality of app. So like, 
writing this presentation made me think about why. Like, why the hell did Tweety become popular? And I came down to these three things. Luck, like I really stumbled into a, a big steaming pile of gold when I wrote <laughs> Tweety. Like I used, I, I used Twitter, a bunch of other people used Twitter, but like, you know, it didn't really hit that, that elbow in the exponential curve at the time. But you know, two months after, it really did. So, so luck it was a huge part of this. Uh, quality, I mean, I'm, I think I'm a decent programmer. I wrote a decent app. It was performant. It was clean. It was nice. It was pretty. You know, maybe it's not as pretty as some other apps, but like, you know, it, it, was, it was pretty enough. Uh, and marketing. If you write a Twitter app and you don't have good marketing, then you're doing something really wrong because the marketing takes care of itself. You write a Twitter app, you tweet about it. If you have more than like three followers, it's guaranteed to spread across the, the Twitterverse. Like, it's just the way Twitter works. So it's really not any, under your control. Well, sort of not, but like you can help it along. And like what I did with Tweety, since in Tweety, in Tweety 1.2, I introduced this thing called P, which stands for Popularity Enhancer. And what it does, it adds, uh, it works though. Like it, it added <laughs> fart sounds to Tweety. It was, it was sort of meant to be a parody of apps in the App Store. And uh, that, that was sort of my, my joke graph. But if you look at the real graph, it actually, it was, it actually kind of followed that. <laughs> I'll show you the graph again. Um, the, the day after I released it, I got write-ups in like, uh, Macworld, Ars Technica, you know, Mac Life, everything. Everything picked it up just because they thought it was funny. I got death threats too. People thought I like ruined their favorite Twitter client, even though the feature was disabled by default. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, this spike right there, that is the introduction of P. So sales quintupled, <laughs> they quintupled day over day, um, which is astonishing. But, but like when they settled back down, I mean, I think this pattern is, is like this for a lot of apps in the App Store, like they spike, and then they sort of go nowhere. But like after the spike, I hit this really nice new plateau. And like the money, the money I was making day to day, that time I was like, whoa, this is like really nice. I can, this is good. I can, I can live on this. Um, and then a whole lot of nothing happened. And then just, I mean, there are no real numbers, but you can see like the correlation between what happened and like how sales go, yeah? Is there any way you can give us a sense of a time scale? Yes, at the very, very beginning, that's November 19th. And this is, I think as of a few days ago. Um, so when did the, yeah, I should have put dates on here. I could put dates on later and then email you guys a copy of the graph. But anyway, like to give you an example, that was P, that was the introduction. This right here, Apple decided to feature it on their main page. Um, right on the iTunes store, it was like the featured app of the week. And it gave me like one solid week of like really great sales. And that, was week, that week was like as at then, at the time, the best you know, solid week ever. So it's nice. but. Comparatively speaking, like when I thought this was awesome at the time, like this really blew it away. <laughs> so what happened here was um, I released Tweety 1.3, which was really just a maintenance release. It added a few new features, like better Japanese localization, you know, random stuff. But it was rejected by Apple because at the time, I forgot who started it. But there was a there was a trending term called the fuck it list, and Apple saw the trending term. And they saw the word fuck, and they were like, uh, no, you can't have curse words in the app. And so I tweeted about it. It was like, ah, oh, Apple rejected Tweety 1.3. And I, I, did, I didn't want to embarrass Apple. It's not in my best interest to embarrass Apple. But people picked up on it. And I got more press that day than like ever before. And even before the app was uh, approved, sales jumped by like an insane amount. So I, it's not in my best interest. To, like I, I don't like embarrassing Apple, um, but that was. I guess it was in my best interest to embarrass Apple. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that was a good day. Uh, but Apple, Apple was really cool about it. They, they reversed the decision within a few hours. I mean, it was really remarkable. They, yeah? Do you charge for upgrades? Uh, no, you're, you actually can't charge for upgrades. It's something I've been talking to Apple about. Right now, every, all the point upgrades have been free. If you wanted to charge for an upgrade, you have to release a whole new app, and there's no, it, like, upgrade path for people, which stinks, because I would like to release Tweety 2 and like charge 99 cents for it. But either I release it completely for free and like don't make any more money, or I charge 2.99 for everyone and piss off all the existing customers. I'm sure they're going to work it out soon, though. Um, so yeah, that's Tweety 1.3. This uh, Twitter started doing their like uh, inbred advertising thing, where they advertise other Twitter-related services. And that spike was Tweety was one of the, th the, the first three things that they started promoting on Twitter.com. And that was a really, really nice spike. And then this last spike you see here, that was the introduction of Tweety for Mac. And I got a ton of press for that, and people followed suit and bought, uh, whatchamacallit, 
the, the iPhone version too. Um, all right, so we talked about luck, we talked about marketing, uh, and then we talked about quality. Like, why, why, it, why do I think Tweety is a quality app um, compared to everything else? And like, there are some really other great Twitter clients out there. Um, I think importantly, I think I have some notes here because I forget. Uh, important, the most important thing is it's simple. Like, everything you see on the screen is made of, well, almost everything is made of standard controls. Like, it's intuitive. You have the simple back button to go to your accounts, just like in mail. You have the compose button, just like in mail. You have the tab bar at the bottom, just like, like half of the apps on the App Store. Like people open up Tweety and they understand how to use it. There's, there's, no, there's no complexity. But you can go and you can take the simplicity and you can add some interesting features to it. Like for example, I added this, this swipe for contextual menu thing. Like if you're in a list and you swipe your finger across, you can get these like instant controls for the Twitter client. And, uh, you know, it's really handy, and you don't have to plaster buttons on the screen constantly. Like, you know, Twitter later, for example, they have buttons next to every single tweet, and they're visible all the time. And you know, these tiny hit areas, but you don't need them visible all the time. If you know how to do this swipe, you can get these instant controls, like with a single single gesture. Um, the important thing to note about this: all of these controls aren't. You're not required to swipe to get to these controls. If you tap on a tweet, all the controls are, are available on the main screen. So, requiring users to, to know like the tricks to get these controls isn't a smart idea. But for advanced users, this is really, really handy. Um, I mean, the entire app is made of standard controls. And I, I strongly recommend you doing that because it's intuitive. But if you, if you want to use custom stuff, just be really careful. I mean, I think there are a few exceptions to the rule where you can get away with using custom stuff. Like the guys at TapBots, I don't know if you've seen WaitBot and ConvertBot. Like those, I think those guys are the exception to the rule. They can get away with using custom, custom controls just because they're you know, awesome. Um, but even they get it wrong. Like if you notice that the, there's a, uh, a time slider that they have a custom control for in their app, it's supposed to act like a, like a scroll view, but it doesn't act like a scroll view because it's all custom and it feels all weird and wonky and everything. Um, the other thing that Tweety does, it has, it's ridiculously fast. I don't actually, I don't save, save state between launches, which is, I guess you can consider a bug, but it also makes it really, really fast to launch because uh, it doesn't have to load anything from Flash. Um, it has ridiculously fast scrolling. I have, I, I don't know if any of you have seen my blog, but I have some links to it. I have uh, examples on, on how to do like ridiculously fast scrolling in uh, table views by you know, basically flattening the layer hi hierarchy into a single image and then you just like blast through it. I mean, when Tweety came out, people were used to uh, you know, Twitterific and Twitterific at the time was like you know, chunk, 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 chunk. And this was decently fast. Um, yeah. I didn't make up many slides because you know, I figured you guys would have more questions than that. But I'm happy to talk about pretty much anything about Tweety. I'm happy to share code, do all that stuff. No questions? Yeah? So were you working by yourself? Or you have any yeah, I'm a, uh, sorry? Oh, uh, was I working by myself? Yes. Uh, I am, well, at the time I was a one-man show. I still technically am. Just recently, just because so many people bought Tweety and there's so many support requests, I hired a guy to do uh, to field email for me. I, I couldn't keep up. It was, it was hundreds a day. You said that you were, you, you improved the Japanese. Or, I mean, has, do you have somebody that does that for you? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I contracted out, well, a contract out is a bad word because I got a lot of localizations done for free. Russian, German, Japanese. You know, I paid a couple hundred bucks for the Japanese one. The, uh, the German and the Russian were both free. I mean, people really would come to me and say, hey, do you want a localization? I'll, I'll do it for free. That's an excellent question. I actually don't remember, but I remember telling my girlfriend, because she's like the awesome name person, uh, hey, I thought of a name, Tweety. And she's like, I hate it. I, 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 don't, think you should, I don't think you should use it. I, I think it's a really girly name, like you know, compared to Twitterlator, which is like, you know, the terminator of, of, of Twitter clients. I wish that name was available. I would have named it that. But I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I think the name might have helped, because it's really accessible. It's really friendly. And I don't know what the gender breakdown between um, for Twitter users are, but I think, like, I don't want to sound sexist, but like, you know, girls, I think, make up a, a massive portion of, of Twitter users, and like, it's more accessible to them than you know, Twitter later. <laughs> uh, oh, what factors led to my success? Let's see. I think 
I mean, I think the slide, like, luck, quality, and marketing, like, really, honestly, you should listen to me talk and then assume that half of what I say is completely wrong. Because I don't, I don't know exactly what I did that made Tweety so, so successful. I'm really guessing when I, when I put this stuff up on the screen. I mean, I think the quality of the app combined with the simplicity and the cheap price. I mean, that's, that's actually the other thing that I wanted to mention. Why, should I, why would I charge $2.99 for the app when I could make it free and then just have this massive user base? I mean, I think that's the magic of the App Store. The App Store makes it just as easy to buy an app as it is to download an app for free. It's the exact same number of taps on your phone. And people already have the credit card hooked up, and it's just, it's just magic. And $2.99 is an impulse price. You know, Twitter, for example, they have a free version, which you know, a ton of people use, and they have a $9.99 version, which, you know, given the quality of the app, it's probably worth $9.99. You know, the amount of work that went into it is worth $9.99. The amount of work that went into Tweety, I don't know, maybe it's worth $9.99 also. But people aren't going to pay $9.99 for, for a mobile Twitter client. You know? So I think the impulse price and the quality and all that stuff sort of contributed to. What about like, more longer term, like your, your education? Uh, working at Apple probably influenced my decision to build a, an iPhone app. Um, but like I said before, I really had no experience building apps when I worked for Apple. Um, like I, I really did start from scratch. Like I started at the same place that all of you were starting when I, after I left Apple to start building, build apps. Uh, when I was in college, I didn't, I mean, I studied electrical engineering. And we did some programming. But everything I learned, I learned on my own. It's like I didn't, I didn't really take a class on how to build any of this stuff. So I really just fell into it, yeah? Can you talk about the transition between moving from the iPhone to building up the Tweety for the Mac? Yeah, uh, you want to talk about the transition between uh, developing for the iPhone and developing for the Mac. And that's, I actually wanted to talk about that too. The really cool thing like, about developing for the iPhone, it's like once you, you like, feel the philosophy of view controllers and navigation controllers, like, you, know, you can understand it on paper and understand the documentation, but once you, once you like, feel it, flow through you. <laughs> like, it's this really beautiful concept. And what I did for Tweety for the Mac is I, is I effectively mimicked UIKit on top of AppKit. So I have view controllers and navigation controllers and tab controllers. Um, and I think I have, I have it running. So for example, this is a, I call it an AB table view controller. And I mimic UI table view controller on the Mac. And I literally have views uh, that recycle. And I swap them down as you scroll around. And when you double click on a tweet, it, uh, this, this is a tab view controller. And this is just another sub view controller. And this is all inside of a navigation controller. And when you switch between tabs, this is a tab view controller and another view controller. So the entire philosophy, I literally poured it to the Mac. And I'm sure Apple's working on the same thing because, I mean, it works. Like this, th this idea that you can have a ton of information and delve into it without having to sprawl across your entire screen is like, really powerful. Yeah. I, I did pretty much everything. I had, I, I recently had a guy redo my website, and he, you know, tweaked the design of Tweet for Mac a little bit, so he deserves some credit. Yes. Uh, what made the ta table view scrolling fast? So I, I have a blog post about this. I can I can share the link with you guys, and it has some example code for on how to do it. Um, in a nutshell, the normal way to, uh, the normal way that at least Apple used to recommend that you do table view scrolling is you have you know, your table view cell, and you add a bunch of sub views to it, like a, an image. Here, do I have Tweety? Who knows where Tweety is? It's somewhere on there. But you, you, you have the table view cell, and you add a bunch of sub views to it. For example, uh, an image view, uh, you know, a label, a, a label, and some buttons. Um, it turns out that's ridiculously slow because LayerKit, I mean, you, you build it all in UIKit, but LayerKit's actually doing all the rendering. When LayerKit goes and like sees this view hierarchy, it'll like render the background and then render the image and then render the label and render the label. And it's like doing a ton of overdraw and it's ha it has to manage all of these different subviews. Um, instead, if what you do is you take this cell and you just do your own custom drawing in the cell, like I draw the image myself into a single, like I have one image, and rather than have layers, I, I have one image, I draw the image myself, I draw the text myself, I draw the text myself, and I just hand off one big image to, to Core Animation. Core, or did I say Layer Kit before? I meant Core Animation. It used to be called Layer Kit. Um, core Animation just takes this one big opaque texture and can blit it to the screen really fast. It doesn't have to like traverse any view hierarchies or like do any compositing or anything. It's just like it's one big texture and just bam, 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 bam. So I mean, that, that's the trick. And since I posted the, uh, the example code, I think Apple updated their own example code. They have, like, they have five different examples on how to do uh, 
table view, drawing, and layout. And it's like the fifth example. I don't know why it's fifth. I don't know why you would do it any other way. But yeah. Uh, so what are the new opportunities? That was a question. Um, that's an excellent question. I have to say that I don't know if you guys saw uh, two new Twitter clients were released last night, Beak for the Mac and Twitterific 2, which looks like hardcore awesome. Um, I think the honeymoon with Tweety is over, so I, I should start to look for new things, and I, I don't know what they are yet. I mean, I'm working on Tweety 2 for iPhone, and I've been throwing all my weight behind Tweety for Mac, and I think those, are, th those will go you know, pretty far before some, someone decides to take my market share away. Uh, so my personal development style, um, ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Like it started out as a two-week project, and since then it's been su it's sucked up the last. It's been out for it's existed for five months, and it's sucked up almost every waking minute of the last five months of my life. I mean, it, it hurts more because I'm, I'm one guy, pretty much doing you know for a while. Like up until two weeks ago, I was doing support and development and you know web design and like everything. So if you guys work in teams, it might help a little bit. I don't know if are they, are they working in teams or it's uh, solo. Not yet. OK. Uh, why did I decide to write a tour client with there, when there were so many competitors? Uh, it, was, it was stupid in hindsight. It was ridiculously stupid. I never should have done it. But I didn't like anything else that was out there. And I, I, I thought, crazily enough, that I could do a better job. And I, I think I got lucky. But I mean, another important thing to take away from this is like, if, if me, if one guy can do this in, I mean, I, like I took over the mobile Twitter space in two or three months. If I can do it in two or three months, I mean, Literally, all of you have the skills to do the exact same thing, and there's nothing stopping you. I mean, Tweety, the brand, like, Twitter users are fickle. If something better comes along, they'll, they'll adopt it in a heartbeat. There's, there's no barrier. They type in a username and a password, and that's it. They have a new Twitter client. Like, all of their information just carries over. There's no lock-in. I mean, so, so run with it. If you think you can do a better job, like, I encourage you. I mean, competition is going to be better for everyone. Yep. Uh, what am I doing about competitors? Um, there's nothing really I can do about competitors other than make my own app better, and that's... I mean, that, that's all I really am doing. I, 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 I think competition's a great thing. I think, I, I, I mean, I don't know what Craig Hockenberry uh, was inspired to, how he was inspired to do Twitter Effect 2, but I'd like to think that Tweety maybe nudged him in a certain direction, like maybe helped him along. And it's better for, for everyone. Like, I mean, like you said before, you know, I, someone buys a Twitter app from me, and then Twitter Effect 2 is that much better, and they'll go buy Twitter Effect 2, and it'll just give me another jumping off point to make people buy another app later. Like, they'll have to buy Tweety 2 from me because they want something better than that. And like, we have this nice leapfrogging going on where we're just making money. Uh, what are the UI issues for people? I, people copying my UI, I don't think there's any barriers. I mean, Twitter clients are all pretty much laid out the same way. You'll have more trouble with Apple being upset that you're copying an icon of theirs. I, I've had, I worked on this other app, app called Borange, and we had a, a phone icon in the app. And Apple was like, you can't use the phone icon. Where like everyone uses the phone icon. They said, no, nope, we use it for our phone. You can't use the phone icon in your app. And the original version of, uh, of Tweety, I used the system bookmarks icon. It's like, it's like a, an outline of a book half opened uh, to save and unsave searches. And Apple's like, you can't use that for that. You, you have to use something else. So I switched it to a star, but it just seemed. What about the right icon? I see your uh, you know, editor, com composer. That's a, that's a system icon, actually. Anyone can use that, and you're encouraged to use that. But you have to use it in the right context. I think that's what Apple's very picky about. They don't want a particular symbol to be overloaded with a few different ideas because a bunch of different developers are using it differently. Yeah. Have you built any other apps and any other false starts? Um, uh, yes. I, with, a, with a neighbor of mine, I built an app called Borange, which is a social network, uh, utility, a social network sharing utility, a social network availability sharing utility. Like you can have, it's hard to explain. You can like share your location and a time and a place you'll be free to call someone. Um, and I mean, I think it's a really nice, nicely designed app, but it hasn't really gone anywhere yet. Uh, what do I do in terms of metrics? I don't do anything. I don't do any, any analytics. I mean, I know people do. I, I just feel a little weird pinging my own server with like, I mean, it's not really personal information because it's all anonymized, but uh, yeah, I don't really feel comfortable with it. For the Mac, it's a lot easier because I can track the number of downloads and I'm integrated with uh, uh, Fusion ads so I can get the number of impressions and click-throughs through that. But for the, for the iPhone app, I really just know how many people have bought it. Yeah. I don't even know how many of those people use it. Um, the features in other apps that I wish I thought of. Twi Tweety covers, I'd say, 80 to 90% of what you need to do. I mean, the other feature, like, 
it, it also invented like a lot of cool stuff, like following reply chains was, was new, and Instapaper integration was new. And both of those things, like other people have followed Tweety in, in a sense. Uh, Twitterific 2 looks like it is a much better reply chain navigation thing. It shows it in one list rather than you have to keep tapping, kind of like Tweety for Mac and how Tweety for Tweety 2 is going to do it. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, I can't really think of too many like crazy features that Tweety doesn't have. I'm sure there are some. And if you guys think of them, you should go and run with it, build a Twitter app, and destroy everyone. Yeah. Uh, my tools, uh, my tool set, I use, uh, Apple's provided tools are awesome. Uh, I use Xcode. Uh, actually, there's no interface builder. There are no nibs in Tweety for iPhone at all. Like everything is built built programmatically. I mean, doing doing view layout and UI kit is, is a joy compared to, to App Kit. App Kit has like 40,000 permutations for a single button. UI Kit, it's like here's a button. I'll set a background image. I'm done. Um, but you know, Shark and you know, uh, Instruments are both you know perfect perfect tools. I mean, I haven't had a problem with either of them. Um, the complexity of the original 2D for iPhone, uh, it was two weeks. I'd say uh, about, a, about five days was spent writing like a Twitter core, which is just you know, interfaces between you know, the iPhone and Twitter. And it, it, it's really awful. It sucks. Like I completely re rewrote it for 2D for Mac. Um, and the other, the other time was spent doing the UI. And then it basically spent a week in beta testers' hands and then a week in review with Apple. So it was like a month from the first, first line of code to being live on the store. Um, I, I would estimate that the original Tweety for iPhone has about 30,000 lines of code, but in comparison, Tweety for Mac has about 80,000 lines of code just because it has a ton of other features and cool stuff that, I mean, isn't exposed just yet. Um, yeah, I think 30,000 lines is a decent estimate. And it's not too, it's, it's, yeah, it's not too big. It might have grown to like 40 since then, but it's the original. Yeah? So how did you handle beta testing? Um, how did I handle beta testing? Beta testing at the time was actually, a, actually it's the same now. Um, basically I tweeted, hey, does anyone want to test a new Twitter client? And everyone was like, yes, I do. And they all sent me their device IDs. I put it in you know, the system and then I you know, basically sh shipped out betas. The, more annoying at the time was uh, reviews. The problem was Apple didn't have promo codes. So anytime someone wanted to do a review, I would have to add them to my ad hoc list and then like make a special build for them and then send it out. And the problem was every time I added someone to the ad hoc list, uh, that spot cannot be deleted and given to someone else. So I have a ton of people on my ad hoc list for basically reviews. They would use the app once and I can't use that spot for, for anything else. So I'd, I'm, I have to sign up for a whole new developer account now until Apple yeah, fixes that. How many point releases I've had? I'm at Tweety 1.3.1 right now and I think I had 1.0, 1.1, uh, one two one two one one three one three one so uh, six or I can't count seven um, I haven't there ha there haven't really been any major crashes or mem memory leaks the, the biggest problem was and I'm sure you guys are going to run into this is dealing with uh, UI WebView uh, UI WebView is my my single biggest like headache when it comes to developing for an app like when they tap on a link rather than bumping them to Safari I bring up uh, an inline web browser that's based on UI WebView and it's I mean, you, you got to give Apple some slack because like, it's incredibly hard what they're trying to do, like expose a single view with a really simple API. Hey, I can display an entire web page to navigation. But it sucks up a ton of memory. It has memory leaks. It crashes. It, like, it, when, when Tweety crashes, it's not really crashing. It's really the system killing it because I used a UI web view in my app. Um, the, the, the marketing for Tweety for iPhone started really as just me tweeting it. And then I got lucky with the, the rejection from Apple because that helped. And then the only like, pseudo marketing I did was introduce P and like, the popularity enhancer, and you know, people picked up on it. Tweety for Mac has had much more you know, traditional marketing. Like I put out a teaser video, and I tweeted about it, and I got a bunch of cool people using it before everyone else. And that's another trick. Get cool people to use it before everyone else. And then people will be jealous, and they will want it. <laughs> yeah. You actually reach out to those people? Uh, to, did you get the other user ahead of time? Did you recruit them, or did they find you? Uh, a little bit of both. Like, I found a few cool people, and their cool friends came to me, <laughs> and they wanted to use it, too. Uh, yeah, kind of. <laughs> Talk more about the philosophy of UI kit and view controllers, yeah. Like, what's the wrong way, what do you think is the right way, and how do you think about it? It's almost hard for me to, like, 
like now that I understand it, it's almost hard for me to even conceive of how I thought of it before. But I, I certainly didn't get it. Like the entire the, the entire model view controller philosophy. Like I understood it in a superficial level. It's like you wanted to separate stuff from other stuff. But until until I started writing iPhone apps, I didn't really understand how like you could have these discrete units and like they would do things you needed and they, they would be like reusable across things without having to like hack special flags. It's like, oh, in this case, do this. And in this, in this case, do this. Um, trying to think of a good way to describe it. Could you show some part of the app for that example? Of the, yeah. If I can get my simulator to, uh, to show up. I don't think the simulator likes the small screen. Maybe not. Um, but like for, for example, I'll give you uh, in Tweety for iPhone, if you are looking at a tweet, um, there's the, the user header at the top and then like the tweet details beneath it. If you want to go to the details about that particular user, rather than sliding over to another screen, which would just be another view controller pushed onto the navigation controller stack, uh, there's a little button that will slide down the tweet um, and reveal that information beneath it. But those are actually two completely separate view controllers. Like I have view controllers within view controllers, within navigation controllers, within another view controller. And like you get this really beautiful hierarchy where you can delve into information without just sticking to the normal navigation controller push pop. Yeah. What's your long term vision? Long term vision? Uh, take the money and run? I don't I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I literally am devoting every waking minute to Tweety for Mac, and like I, I built this really beautiful new core that's going to power the new the new iPhone version. Um, so I think Tweety two is definitely going to be king once more, you know, down the road. But after that, I'm I'm really not sure. Uh, the graphics and icons are made almost entirely in Photoshop, just plain old Photoshop. I mean, I, I know. I re back when I was little, I wanted to work for Pixar, so I, I t taught myself all the like 3D programs. So I do some stuff at Cinema 4D, but the vast majority of it is just like from scratch in Photoshop. Uh, yes, regarding uh, OS 3, Tweety 2 is going to be targeting OS 3 exclusively, just because I mean, why not? Everyone's going to have it. Um, push is probably the most awesome thing to come to 3.0, but that's less up to me and more up to Twitter. I've talked to the guys at Twitter. I know they want to do it. I know Apple wants them to do it. And they know I want them to do it. So I, we all want to do it. It's just a matter of when. And I think it's going to come for direct messages first, which is going to be great because it can replace SMS for a lot of uh, SMS and IM for a lot of cases. Um, but beyond that, I, like I'm not sure of the utility of push for every single tweet unless you follow like four people. I mean, I wouldn't want to be notified. I mean, I follow 100 people, and that's already too many to be getting notified of every single tweet. I mean, way too many. Um, OS3 adds a few other handy things like you know the inline mail uh, composer, so I don't have to quit the app and relaunch it when I want to compose something. It's just like a really a bu bunch of nice tweaks and whatnot. Oh, my Twitter username? I have three. I have four. I actually have six. But I, <laughs> um, I'll only tell you three. Um, I'm, I'm 8bits, A-T-E-B-I-T-S, uh, Tweety, just like Tweety, and uh, Lauren B, L-O-R-E-N-B. Yeah. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.